What is up everybody? My name is Alex, welcome back to the channel and today I'm very excited to be working on this, my 2003 Mercedes-Benz E55 AMG. And the reason I'm so excited is because this is gonna be kind of like the meat and potatoes of the build. I'll be finally adding a bunch more power to this car by adding more boost. Now, if you've been following along with my videos, you know that I said I was gonna do all the supporting mods before I added any boost to this car. Well, plans have changed and I kind of lied to everybody out there. I got a bunch more parts in the mail and they're over on my table right here. So let's go take a look at what I'll be doing to this car in this video. My table of high performance is totally loaded up with performance parts for the E55 and some of this stuff you guys might recognize from a previous video. We have the snow performance water methanol injection kit, larger 650 cc fuel injectors, and this is new, this is a looped fuel rail. And I'll be going over all of this stuff in another video, but this is what's going on in the E55 in today's video. And honestly, this is the stuff I'm most excited about because I'm finally adding a ton more horsepower to this car. I'll start off with one of the most popular modifications on this engine, and that's getting a smaller supercharger pulley. This is a 76 millimeter clutch pulley from VRP. It's their black series. It's made in the United States. It's a really nice piece. They run about 550 bucks. Do not cheap out on these pulleys because the cheap ones can actually come apart and cause some serious damage. To go along with that, I went with a belt wrap kit with a brand new belt, and this is gonna help reduce belt slippage, which can sometimes occur when you go with a smaller supercharger pulley. And then moving on down the table, you might recognize this from another video. We have an 85 millimeter throttle body and in order to use that you do have to have your factory supercharger snout ported out and then this is a really nice adapter ring that you can fit a methanol injection nozzle right into which I'll definitely be doing. Oh and then I just wanted to show you guys this is a new trans module from Race IQ. If you remember in my race video how slow the transmission was shifting, I've already tried this and it is awesome so I can't wait to show you guys in the next video how much quicker the transmission shifts. Before I get to ripping the supercharger off I have to profess my love for the 113 Mercedes engine. Um, these things are absolutely amazing. I was a dealership technician starting in 2003 when these came out for nine years and I think I took off maybe three superchargers in my entire career at the dealership. And the reason for it is these things are awesome. These engines kick ass, they're totally bulletproof and we really had like no problems with these which is something you definitely could not say when the 156 engine came out in the 63 cars. So anyway, uh, let's see if I remember even how to take one of these things off. taking the blower off. I got no one around. I work really weird hours to help me with this. That thing weighs a ton. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna definitely need some help when I go back on. There's just no way I'm gonna be able to line up all the gaskets and everything by myself, but holy crap, that thing is heavy. All right, guys, I took a little bit of a break from having to muscle that supercharger off all by myself, and I got it up on the table now. This is probably the heaviest thing I've had up here, and I think I'm gonna start off with the throttle body, so I gotta take off a bunch of stuff right here, uh, and then I'll do the pulley uh, afterwards, so let's get going. My supercharger is all taken apart and off camera I went to town cleaning this up. All the gasket mating surfaces perfectly clean. I even ran a little bit of water and degreaser inside of the intercooler and I cleaned that out as well. So all of this is ready to go back together but before I do that I just wanted to mention something that's really really important when you're doing the throttle body job on these Mercedes engines and that is replacing gaskets and hoses that can wear out over time. If you don't replace these they can sometimes cause air leaks which eventually leads to check engine lights and even hesitation upon acceleration and you don't want 
anything to do with that. Now, instead of showing you every single hose and gasket and clamp that I'm replacing, I will simply list them all down below in the description box. And of course, I got all of this stuff from FCP Euro. They're a really cool online European auto parts store that lists everything on their website with a lifetime warranty. That includes wear items like brakes and clutches and gaskets. Let's say I wanted to take this all back apart one day and the gaskets hadn't necessarily failed. I could simply just send them my old gaskets and they send me new ones for life. It's an awesome program. Uh, and honestly, I don't know anyone else that offers that. So really cool. Check out FCP Euro. Now, before we put this stuff back together, because the supercharger is laying so flat on the table, uh, I'm gonna show you guys first how to do the supercharger pulley. It's actually really, really easy. So let's get that going first and then we'll put all this back together. Before I show you guys the basics on how to replace the supercharger pulley, I just wanna mention in no way, shape or form do you have to take the supercharger off to do this job. It's actually really easy to do on the car. I only took my supercharger off so I could do the throttle body and eventually a methanol injection kit, which will actually be in the next video. So definitely stay tuned for that. So first things first, I like to measure the gap here uh, for the supercharger pulley and factory spec is 0.35 to 0.45 millimeters. Mine's right at like 0.50 millimeters. So uh, that's totally fine. It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. Uh, so the main goal here is to simply get this big bolt out so we can slide this pulley off. In order to do that, you have to hold this magnetic drum right here. And there's a couple different ways you can do that. Some guys will simply use a huge uh, hose clamp like this or two and they'll strap it around this drum and eventually it'll get jammed up by uh, this part of the supercharger right here. Now this will kind of like scratch this drum up. So what I like to do is use an old oil filter wrench. I uh, bought this in uh, a previous life of wrenching on old diesel trucks and all that does is it just wraps around here really nice, doesn't scratch anything and then you hold this and then you use a big breaker bar uh, or whatever you have, a big ratchet and a 24 millimeter uh, and you get this bolt off. It's held down by about 60 newton meters so it's kind of hard and you can use a little bit of heat if you need to. Uh, what I like to use and if you have air tools available, just use a really nice impact wrench and you don't even really need to hold this all that well. It just goes, just comes right off like that. Um, this is actually the way that Mercedes wants you to do it right in the work instructions. And then you have this. Uh, washer usually just slides right out and there's a couple dowel pins. Sometimes these things bend or they even shear off and honestly I haven't seen anyone have any issues with not even running those. Um, and then the pulley just kind of slides off like that and that's it. So here's your factory pulley, it is gone. And then what we're gonna do, um, oh first before I put this on I gotta show you there are some shims in here that set that gap that I just showed you. Uh, so for now we're gonna leave them on and uh, there's four shims on there currently. So all we're gonna do is we're going to um, put the supercharger, the new, the new pulley on, might have to tap it on a little bit. Um, and then before you put this bolt in completely, whoops, need the washer. Um, you, you're gonna wanna measure this gap. So basically, uh, eventually I'll be lock tightening this bolt, but for now we're just gonna zip it in, measure the gap a few times until we get it perfect, and then we're gonna torque this bolt down. Uh, that you don't wanna use the impact wrench for. You're gonna wanna use this holder um, and torque it down to 60 newton meters, that's it. And then this is pretty much done. So you're gonna have to play with those shims a little bit, um, but then the job is done and you're ready to rock and roll. So uh, let me put this all together and then we're gonna move on to that throttle body and then at the end I'm gonna do the uh, giveaway. I'm gonna pick someone at random for those intake scoops. So let's get going. Charger is all put back together and ready to go on the E55, uh, but I'm not actually gonna do that in this video because in the next E55 build video, I'm gonna show you guys a dual nozzle water methanol injection kit, and that requires me to show you the very bottom of the intercooler where I've drilled out for one of the two nozzles, so definitely stay tuned for that video. That will do it for today's video. Please stay tuned for the next one on the methanol injection kit, and if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share, subscribe, do all that awesome YouTube stuff, and I will see everybody in the next video. Yeah.